Welcome back. In this lesson we are going to learn about the implicit capture method, which is also known as the survival biasing. The implicit capture method is primarily designed for the so-called shielding simulations, in, in which we want to calculate a response of a detector which is placed in a location where the neutron flux is very small compared to the other parts of the system. So for instance, when you place a detector outside of the nuclear reactor, the response of the detector will be very small compared to a detector which is placed inside of the system. So let's just assume that we have a system that absorbs neutrons and we have a detector placed outside and uh, let's place the source of the neutrons here so that's the same system which I used in one of our previous lectures so if the material of this uh, block contains uh, a strong absorber for neutrons then the neutrons which enter this block have very small chance to penetrate to the other side and to be registered in the volume of the detector. So if the, if the absorber is very strong then those neutrons which enter they will be captured uh, very quickly within a short distance from the source. There will be a few which may scatter once and then they will be captured again. And there will be practically no chance that any of the neutron histories would uh, end up in the detector. So a Monte Carlo simulation that would correctly estimate the detector response would be extremely expensive in terms of the computing cost. So uh, how can we solve this problem? Well, we can solve it by applying a non-analog uh, neutron transport on this problem. And we can apply the implicit capture method in this case, which means that we alter the probability distributions for sampling the reaction types. So we actually change the probability for uh, uh, selecting the type at the collisions. Uh, so the implicit capture actually uh, does not simulate the capture or the fission reaction explicitly and instead at every collision the scattering is chosen. So when we apply the implicit capture on the neutron transport simulation here uh, we can get the neutron histories that may look like this. I'm going to use the blue color here to distinguish them. The neutrons will not be captured at all and they will undergo only the scattering reactions. So uh, some of them will make it to the other side of this block and some of those neutron histories that eventually uh, make it to the other side of this block can uh, eventually end up in the volume of, of the detector. So of course the chances that the neutron histories end up in the volume of the detector dramatically improve once we apply the implicit capture method to the neutron transport simulation. So we have already learned in the previous lessons that uh, when we change the rules that we use to sample the neutron transport uh, we need to compensate the statistical weight of the neutron histories in such a way that the results are not biased. So in this case we are changing the probability with which we select the reaction types. So the correct uh, probability with which the uh, scattering reaction is sampled in analog simulations is a ratio of the scattering uh, microscopic cross-section and the total microscopic cross-section for a selected uh, nuclide. You could also calculate this as a ratio of microscopic cross-section because the nuclide density is the same for a single nuclide. 
Now, when we apply the implicit capture method to the neutron transport simulation, then uh, we always simulate the scattering reaction. There are no absorption reactions simulated. So we change this probability into 1 because the scattering correction is chosen with probability 1. So this is the original probability for sampling the scattering correction and this is the altered probability for uh, selecting the scattering correction. Now we have learned about the important sampling method uh, in one of the previous lectures on which the implicit capture method is based on. And so we have learned that uh, you can calculate the correction factor by dividing the original probability by the altered probability. So in this case, this is the ratio of uh, these two numbers. So the correction factor equals to the ratio of the uh, scattering macroscopic cross-section and the total macroscopic cross-section. So every time we sample a new collision, we need to multiply the neutron weight with this uh, correction factor. So let's take an example. Let's say that the probability of scattering is 50%. So this ratio is 0.5. Every second collision should be scattering and the neutron should be absorbed in every other second uh, collision. Uh, so, when we apply the implicit capture, we will simply uh, multiply the weight of the neutron by 0.5 every time. So, uh, the weight will decrease twice at every collision point until eventually the weight of the neutron is uh, below the uh, cut-off weight. It's uh, the limiting uh, value that we have to decide uh, before the simulation. So at that point, when the weight drops below the weight limit, we need to apply the Russian roulette rule and uh, the neutron may be killed as a result of this or it may continue to be simulated with uh, increased uh, weight. Now, the choice of the weight limit very much depends on what kind of problem we want to solve. So, for instance, in this case, we know that the neutron will have to undergo many collisions, many scattering collisions, uh, before it uh, may end up in the volume of the detector. So, we know that during all these uh, scattering collisions, its weight will be reduced uh, considerably. So we have to set the weight limit uh, very small so that uh, we don't terminate the neutron histories before they have the chance to penetrate into the detector. So here is a short summary of the implicit capture method. We force uh, the neutrons to scatter at every collision. So we actually don't have to uh, sample the type of the reaction because we know it's going to be scattering every time. Every time the neutron uh, undergoes the collision we need to adjust the weight of the neutron so we multiply it by this ratio of scattering and total cross-section. So in this case uh, the W prime is the uh, statistical weight of the neutron before the collision and W is the corrected uh, statistical weight. When the statistical weight of the neutron drops below the weight limit, we need to apply the Russian roulette rule to decide the fate for the neutron history. So uh, the neutron history may be terminated or uh, it may uh, continue. In that case, the neutron uh, statistical weight will be increased. You should remember that the implicit capture method is primarily useful in the shielding calculations. Uh, so those are calculations where we have a detector 
outside of the system and neutrons need to penetrate massive blocks of absorbing material in order to score in the volume of the detectors. So in this type of simulations we need to select a very small value for the uh, limit of the neutron statistical weight so that we allow for a larger number of uh, collisions in each neutron history. Now in case that you apply the implicit capture method to other calculations which are non-shielding then you should be very careful with how you set up the limit, the minimal limit to the uh, neutron weights. Basically you should choose a number which is not very small. You can set it to value 0.4, 0.5 for instance. If you choose a very small value for this limit, then you'll be wasting the computing time for simulation of neutron histories that will have very small weight and they, they are not going to contribute to the results. So uh, be careful when you run uh, criticality simulations, the limit uh, to the neutron weights should be rather uh, a bigger number. And that is all for now. Have a nice day.